The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him, to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For his astonishment at the catch had seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday, I was speaking with our confirmation candidates about these readings. As they prepare for the sacrament of confirmation, the question of God's call and their response, of discipleship, even with all of our flaws, of choosing to carry forward God's work in the world, they're all fresh and immediately relevant to them. But for those of us who've been confirmed for a few years, these readings are a good chance to stop, to take stock, and to see if we are responding, like Isaiah and Peter, to the call for discipleship. Now, Peter is a great place to start, because we have a tendency to look at Isaiah as the great prophet, and Peter as the first of the apostles and to write them off as from a distant age and to be starstruck by their prominence in the Bible and to miss that they're people just like us with flaws and problems and that we need to hear and focus on their response of yes as a model for each of us. 
No matter our age, no matter our health, no matter our job, even with all of our flaws and failings, and Peter can help us break through this sense of awe to see this. Yes, Peter is great of faith and truly loves Jesus, but Peter is also just a little bit slow on the uptake, and I love him for that, because I too can be a little bit slow to catch on. In today's gospel, Peter hears Jesus preaching, sitting in the same boat as Jesus, but he doesn't get it. And then Jesus tells him to lower the nets, and Peter has caught nothing all night, and fish immediately are caught. But Peter still doesn't get the call. Then there are so many fish that the nets are tearing apart. Peter still doesn't get it. Finally, there are two boats, both at the point of sinking. And Peter says, wait, there's a call. And he responds. Peter now gets it. Similarly for us, God is in front of us at each Mass, right here. But we can miss the call to be his disciple. God is in the love of our family, our friends, our co-workers, and still we can miss God's call. God is in the gifts of our life, all that we own, all that we possess, all of our opportunities, none of which we deserve, all are given to us by grace and still miss the call. Peter is in each and every one of us. But we shouldn't feel too bad. Isaiah was in the temple, and the temple fills with smoke. The earth shakes, the seraphim sing. It took just a little bit to get his attention too. Today's readings call us to answer the Lord's cry, whom shall I send? To respond as Peter did at the words of Jesus. And it's us. Simple, flawed, some of us a little slow on the uptake, who God is calling to. Now Isaiah asks us to see him as he is when he says, I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. And Peter is asking us to see him as he truly is when he says, I am a sinful man. And we need to focus on the response. Here I am, send me, because that is where it's important. Now the confirmation candidates have their whole life spread out before them as they consider what is their yes to God. What job, what education, what vocation? What role is the hands, the arms, the feet, the body of Christ as the church is theirs? But the question is not just theirs, and it's not just a question that we're asked once. Each of us, through our baptism and our confirmation, are regularly called to that question. As the body of Christ, as the church, what is God asking each and every one of us to do? And will we dare to respond? And then, hopefully, with the grace of God, to say, here I am, send me, to be prepared to leave behind all that's unimportant, and maybe even to become fishers of men. The confirmation candidates we're praying for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to hear and respond to God's call for them in their life. Today's readings call out to each and every one of us, and we should join our candidates in asking the Holy Spirit so that we might hear and respond to God's call.